Welcome to Legacy Boxing Showcase, sponsored by Legacy Boxing Promotions. Pet S Collision, Ed Nunez, along with Austin Colleen. And Austin, you got, a, you got in studio, we have Jose Josorio, featherweight. He'll be with us on the next segment, and we'll talk to him about his career. And he's not going to be able to box anymore due to some medical issues. But uh, going over his record here, he certainly had some tough fights. And uh, we'll talk to him about why he won't be able to continue. But a tough featherweight fighter here, 126 pounds. So glad that we have him in studio. And... Uh, you, you were at the Silver Gloves boxing this weekend, and I think a lot of people don't know about some great cards around town here. Uh, <laughs> they're not well publicized sometimes. You said it was at five right. points, so you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, the organizer of it was Alejandro Castillo, and I, I've done some amateur cards with him in the past. He's amazing. He does a beautiful job. I know Alejandro. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, he does a... Great job, and what they do with the non-tournament bouts, they call them show bouts, and usually they're okay. Not with him. He brings in fighters from out of state, so his show bouts are as good as the tournament bouts. And there was a fighter from um, Farmington, New Mexico, who was in the show bouts. His name was Roland Nez. He's a Native American, and he had three brothers that were also terrific fighters, but Roland's about six feet one, weighs 130 pounds. And uh, I don't know who they finally picked as the fighter of the tournament, but I voted for him. He uh, had two tough fights, but the second fight the, on Sunday, he won the first round pretty impressively, but he was fighting a tough opponent. And in the second round, I actually thought he lost a round. The third round, he came out with a just brought it up another level, nailed the guy with a body shot, and he just literally folded in half, and he was paralyzed, and Jeez. they just stopped it. So uh, <laughs> I think this Nez could turn pro right now. We can ask our guest when he comes on, because he saw the same fight I did. Finding that lightweight, six foot, uh, 130 yes. pounds, finding yeah. the lightweight. And how old is he, do you know? 16. Okay, so he can fight at that weight for a while. You know, you look at the big welterweights, I always think of Tommy Hearns, at, you know, 6'1", 147 at his best. You know, maybe people would argue about that when he beat Pepino Cuevas oh. uh, for the WBC uh, welterweight championship. Um, so uh, yeah, you can hold that weight, and then Hearns actually moved up to super middleweight. I don't know if he ever fought as a light heavyweight. I don't think he did. He might have. Super sure. middleweight for sure at 168. Um, that's a good comparison when you talk Tommy Hearns and this Nez, because, I mean, he, he literally looks like him. He has a... Nice jab, beautiful end fighter. That was the other thing. The guys are four inches, five inches short of them. I mean, he's beating them at their game. But the, his second opponent was tough. That kid probably would have won most of the fights, but he he just got the short straw when he got Nez as his opponent. I think there's so many there's so many fighters out there at the amateur level that you get to see on a regular basis, and people don't know about them, right? They don't they don't really get to see them. We hear about Diamond Boy Griego, we hear about Josh Pitbull, Torres, uh, you know, we hear about the names in town here. There's some there's some up and coming fighters. You know, we had Jason San, Ala, uh, Alacrancito, we had him on, the WBO youth champion. And there's some uh, really good fighters coming in, coming up in, in a exciting time for boxing in Albuquerque. I don't think there's any doubt about it. But you get to see <laughs> a lot of fights, man. I don't know how many rounds you've seen in your life, but it has to be hundreds I was, of thousands. I, I was uh, seeing gloves by the end of Sunday. <laughs> There's 23 fights on Saturday and then another 17. And now i got to go home and write them all up. And i got to put that's in... And that's mention at cleanscorner.com. Right. You know, you write a column just about every week. I try to. But I, sometimes I don't make it. <laughs> you've, been, you've been covering boxing on Colleen's Corner for how long? Since uh, 2011. Congrats to many, many years, many fights that you've seen, a former right. fighter yourself, I believe, a former trainer. Fighter. I trained a few fighters, but I just, like, the trainer's the worst job in boxing. You can be with the fighter three hours, but what's he doing the other 21? Now, our guest today, Jose Osario, I mean, training him would be a breeze because, you know, he's taking care of his body the other 21 hours. You're not with him. But a lot of fighters, you know, they just see a pizza shop and they see if they can eat page three. <laughs> and, uh, well, 
I used to say that about uh, Duran, Roberto Duran, that uh, Freddie Brown and Ray Arcel would have to keep, you know, he, of course, uh, Duran, my favorite fighter of all time with Ali. Uh, Duran would see a steak and they'd have to throw away the potatoes, but who knew what he was doing? Duran, between fights, ballooned up to 200 pounds. I loved him. That was my favorite guy, man. I really liked him a lot. But, you know, the guy, after he beat Sugar Ray Leonard, went crazy, right? And that's why Leonard said, let's get the rematch right away. Sugar Ray Leonard was smart about it because he knew Duran had, you know, conquered the American. And that's what Duran wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, he was a big thing for him to beat the, the best the Americans had, right? He and went up to 190. <laughs> and five to lose it how got quick. jacked up 147. Right, had, had to lose it. And then said he took all these things. Medic uh, and nobody knows. They had the 30 for 30, and they asked Duran straight up. And Leonard asked him. And nobody, Duran has a million stories. Because I read his book, Hands of Stone. After the fight, he's in the, he's in the suite. He's having a party. And then finally someone looks at him like, are you kidding me? You just quit. Right. And then he kind of realized what he had done. But Duran, with his machismo, is never going to admit that he quit. And it was an embarrassment, but the guy's still a great champion. But going back to your point about trainers, you mentioned that. Uh, it's very hard because people get, hey, look, in America, there's the land of temptation everywhere. You go down the street, there's, how can you sit there and, and say stop? You know, unless you really are very disciplined. Uh, there's, every gym I've been in, there's fighters, they'll just take a fight. They don't even train. They can punch. They figure they're going to get lucky. But if you get by a couple of rounds with them, you're going to beat them. And they'll just keep taking fights. Well, what we've seen a couple of those, uh, you know, I think Jose Osorio, Osorio fought Stefan McIntyre as one of them. Whoa. And, you know, Stefan McIntyre, a veteran, right? And we saw, I think, with Labala. Was it Mendoza that fought him? I, th I think it was. Right. Or was it Anthony Hill? I'm not sure. Either one of those guys. And, and then uh, Tavoris Teague, the veteran. The three, all three it, it fit come, that same bill. Come in shape, right? They are in shape. They're, they're, they're not the, the slobs I was talking about. And people would think with the records that they have that these are, these are tomato cans, and they're not. Tavoris T confused uh, Matthew Papitas Escobel so bad that, I, again, people were calling for a rematch. I'm like, if I'm Matthew Papitas Escobel, I want no part of Tavoris T. I don't want any part of him because his style is so awkward, and he's so hard to hit. Same thing with Anthony Hill, and, and I think Jose Osorio will t attest to this, Stefan McIntyre. They're all, you know, come from the same kind of lineage. Uh, they got steel bodies. I mean, they... they, they Veteran they, fighters. I don't understand why their records are... I don't get are. it. You would think that a decision would have gone, you know, 4 and 20? Are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, because, again, the guy's in fan... It always comes in fantastic shape. You know, with Stefan McIntyre, he'd try to win the end of the round. He would cover up, peek a boom, and then the last 10 seconds when he hear boom, 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 then all of a sudden he's, he's coming from, from nowhere uh, throwing haymakers. Well, up right, fought out of low mass... The guy basically was just going to go easy. He, he had a lousy record. Well, the other guy, and I won't mention names because I don't want to get into anything. The other guy started banging him around. Well, he went back to the corner and he says, hey, uh, you know, this guy, he, he's trying to hurt me. I, I'm getting mad. Well, in the third round, he knocked the other guy out. And he was supposed to lose. Yeah, see? So, yeah. They just got mad. Yeah, you get hit in the it. face, it'll, 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 uh, <laughs> it'll anger. We'll be back to Legacy Boxing Showcase after these messages. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network.
The Barley Bowl, a proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years, is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provy Sports Network. The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Car Crafters, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched them do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? No! Bad dog! Hi, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? Don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. Car Crafters! It's like it never happened! Duke City Sports Bar. Proud supporter of ProView Sports and New Mexico Youth Athletics. Catch all the sports action from high school, college, pros, and MMA on one of our 35 HD TVs. Start your night off right with any selection from our delicious menu prepared with fresh, never frozen ingredients. Duke City Sports Bar, Albuquerque's newest sports bar. Located on Eubank and Montgomery, dial 505-433-4020. Welcome back to Legacy Boxing Showcase, sponsored by Legacy Boxing Promotions, Pettis Collision, Ed Nunez, along with Austin Colina in studio with us. The featherweight Jose Josorio from uh, Mexico, Sinola, Mexico. And Jose, it's good to have you on the show, man. Really thank you, good thank to you have for you. having you me. Bet. Thank you for having you me. Bet. Thank you, Austin. You fought at 126 pounds your last fight last uh, January, I believe, at uh, Buffalo Thunder. You know, Mike Adams, a good friend of the show. He does the uh, the uh, all the, the announcing out there. and. I'm sure he announced you, and Mike. Mike has a, his own style, and uh, Mike's, uh, you know, also uh, the co-host with him on, on the mic with Mike Adams, and uh, he's a great, great guy. So he's, he's great. He's a really good announcer. Let me tell you, well, I think one of the best. Here. No, he's no doubt. He's a Hall of Famer. He's in the yeah, Hall of Fame for, for ring announcing. He belongs there. But every time I hear him, I smile, man, because you know he really gives uh, the, the the pizzazz, and he gets the crowd ramped up for it. Um, I know, I know that uh, Austin has some some questions for you. Uh, record of 10 and 3, and you're going to finish with that, and we'll talk about that in a little bit after Austin asks some questions. Go ahead, Austin. Um, well, I'll start with your amateur career. You won the uh, New Mexico Golden Gloves two years in a row. Yeah, I, I won them two years in a row, the same weight class as well, so I won them the first year, came back, uh, defending them again the second year. No, because were you allowed to fight the Colorado team? I was allowed to fight the Colorado team, but I wasn't able to uh, um, advance. So um, they would just call them as like a show bow, right. or we'll call it a show bow, uh, because, I, because of my uh, nationality. 
Um, so because of that, they didn't allow me to continue to go into nationals. I, I felt like I, both times that I fought, I, I thought I, I pulled them off, but things happen. Uh, it is what it is. So that's why I, I turned pro. I think there's a lot of fighters would like to see Mexican fighters not allowed to, <laughs> and they'd have better records. The, uh, but you were very good in the amateurs. Now, I don't want to upset you, but your no, first fine, pro yeah. fight was a shocker. And uh, you got knocked out in the first round. Yeah, that, that was my, my pro debut. Um, I, I think that was our fault. I think we went a little bit too light on our weight. Yeah. Um, that was my, I think the weight was 118 pounds. Well, he was 118. tough. Yeah, and he was, he, was, he was a good fighter. Well, he has a very good amateur. Like he he's, does. He's, he's like 200 back, amateur uh, fights or more. So. Luis Mangano. Yeah. He'll be making a comeback here at the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm happy for him, you know, definitely. Um, I hope he does, he does good because I fought him, you know. Um, I think, I, like I said, I, I think it was my fault our, my because I went too low on the weight, but. Now, you were able to shake that off, but what did it take to come back? Matter of fact, in your second fight, you got Gene Perez, and you were kind of tentative initially. In, in the fourth round, you hit your stride. But uh, what goes through your mind when you take a, you know, a shocking loss? I think the knockout's always in, in your head. Right. Um, not just after the next fight, but throughout your whole career. Um, I do diff I did different things in the in the gym to help me out with that. Um, I think I think I, I shook it off and, and continued with the great career at the end. So. Well, you know, I mean, you have a solid chin because I don't even think you've ever been dropped <laughs> since then. No, that I haven't. I haven't and been I dropped. And I saw you get tagged yeah. a few times, and you fought some really good fighters in your career. Oh yeah, some that had like almost eighty something percent knockout and percentage of the records, but I, I was able to take their shots. Yeah. Yeah, so it was probably a fluke, but still, and so you showed something right there. Yeah, I think I showed my resilience and, and the abilities to come back from a loss and still continue with the career. You know, you're 26 years old, and we'll talk again about why you know, you can't. You went through an MRI for you were going to fight. You went through one MRI and then, then another, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But a um, lot of experience, and uh, how many years professional experience did you did you, did you end up with? Um, I, you said I, 14 bouts here for 14 professional bouts. Yeah, so I think I started it. What year? It says it the year that I started. 2004? Is that it? Uh, no, I think I started in 2014. 14. 14. Yeah. Sorry, 14. sorry, I read that wrong. So you started out in 2014, which um, that gives you quite a many years experience. And as you mentioned, never been knocked down. No, no, never. After that, after that, um, knock the, the knockout there, I had never got put down. Yeah. That's uh, that's really that's really saying something because as you mentioned some of the guys that you uh, you know Gene Pettis is a tough customer oh, yeah, so you got knocked out your first fight and I think that says a lot about you as a fighter because Gene Pettis we saw him fight Angel Baby Pettis and uh, and he and, and Angel Baby Pettis beat him but it was a tough fight oh. it's a tough fight so you're fighting Gene Pettis in your second fight mm -hmm. and uh, you, you unanimous decision in four yeah so I think that says a lot about your resiliency because a lot of times after you get you know you beat you got beat in your first fight you know there's probably question marks you're human yeah you know until until you go in there and you took care of business against gene pettis what do you remember about that fight um i remember him being very very tough like i hit him with every shot and i and i think i have a decent decent punch i hit him and he just would keep on coming non-stop coming forward coming forward and he's a veteran he never quit he never quit ever he i think in his mind he thought that he could win the fight at any on any second Maybe because of the first, my first fight, but um, I think I showed him and uh, uh, my resilience in there as well. So. Well, you must have shown the judges that it's unanimous, yeah. and, and a lot of times, you know, you don't get, you get split, you get, you know. So you must have shown something, something to someone. Yeah. As, like you mentioned, he's a guy that those veteran fighters, as we mentioned, we'll talk about. I'll talk, I'll ask you about Stephon McIntyre in a minute. But those veteran fighters, people don't get it. They may see a record in the paper and say this is going to be an easy fight. And we mentioned Stephon McIntyre, Anthony Hill. And Tavoris Teague. And those guys are handfuls for anybody, even though the records don't indicate it. I've watched those guys fight. Yes, yeah, so you the record, um I really never went with the record. I always trained hard like as if they were world champions. And I think um a lot of times fighters make that mistake and just seeing the record to win so many losses and they just don't train as hard. Um and uh that's when they can get one on you, you know. So 
And those guys there, like Stephen McIntyre, who you mentioned, he was a tough, tough customer. He came to fight. He was ready. He was ready to fight. He was ready to win also. Um, but we showed him here in New Mexico that he wasn't going to come to win. So. Peekaboo defense. Okay, Peekaboo covers yeah. up a lot. And then I, I noticed this. We did the Battle of the Brave last November. Myself, Austin Colleen, and Daniel Pitbull Pettis. That the last 10 seconds, all of a sudden the guy the, the guy comes out of nowhere just winging, man. He tries yeah. to win the last 10. Yeah. You know, but boom, covers up. And all of a sudden when he hears that ding, ding, man, all of a sudden like a signal comes yeah. on. So, Austin, go ahead. Well, that Peekaboo was the fad. Well, I'm showing my age back in the 50s when Floyd Patterson turned pro after winning his gold medal. And Gus Damata was his manager, and he had several other fighters, and they all did very good. Jose Torres was a light heavyweight champ. Of the world. One of the best. Yeah, he was. He could really... Bomb. Trained Tyson later, right? Didn't he train yeah, Tyson? Yeah, he trained Tyson, although Tyson really didn't use a peekaboo. But, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he didn't. He was in yeah. hiding. He just yeah, that guy came out throwing him. bombs, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God, that guy was a devastating force when oh. he was trained by Kevin Rooney. Oh, yeah. And then when he went to Don King, it was the beginning of the yeah. end. He was never the same. Now, yeah. I'm not going to blame it all on King, but, you know, you got you got this guy that Kevin Rooney, not only was he offensively proficient, but if you watch his defense, the way the head movement, and if you left a punch out there, ask Carl the Truth Williams about that. He almost killed him. Yeah. yeah. I'm what sorry, a, Austin. What a slip, he slipped a beautiful jab of Williams. Oh, my gosh. Him with a left hook, and that was the fight. Almost Turkey. knocked him out of the ring. Oh, God, and that Williams was, was, what, six feet tall? Yes. Really? Oh, tall. my goodness. That was devastating. Go devastating. ahead, Austin. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to No, no, honest. you're not interrupting. Um, then you, you know, you got a couple of wins. Then you got another beast, Augustine Benitez. And um, I don't know if he's, he hasn't fought in a year, but he's still undefeated. And uh, he can hit. His record is only has four knockouts, but he's been fighting featherweights and junior lightweights. And that was another tough fight to took on. So in your first four fights, you're taking on some animals. Yeah, I, I, we think that um, that we took those fights um, because we thought we could win. Um, and, and I think that fight was really, really hard. Um, he was he was tough man. He can he can box. So if his record doesn't have that much knockouts, I think because he he sticks to the boxing. He he can hit. He can move. Um, he was really fast. To, don't tell that to Tony Valdez. Oh man, yeah, that was that was a, that was a bad fight for our New Mexican fighter there. But uh, Tony Tony was a really good good fighter. I I really like Tony. Um, but Benegas just was a better fighter that night. So well, they were he was fighting a bantamweight. When he fights bantamweights, he can. Bang, and, but unfortunately, there's personal issues, so he hasn't fought now in about a year. Yeah. But your fight was really close. You came out cold in the first round for some reason. I mean, got that, but the other three rounds were hotly contested, and uh, you know he just got a unanimous decision. But it was close decision. Yeah. The rounds were very competitive. Yeah, I think we did we did our job that fight that yeah. night. So. You know, I said six wins in your last. You're six and zero in your last six fights. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that I mean, that's uh, that's that's incredible. I mean, and I think one of the things that I learned a lot from Austin is with the boxing game, you can't tell what the judges are going to do, what the trainers, promoters. Gosh, right? We talk about fights that we want to see in Albuquerque. You know, we've got these rising fighters. You would like love to see them fight each other someday, like Romero and Tapia did in '97. Yeah. And I remember being at a Tapia fight. In ninety, you know, in the nineties, at the pit, and I remember, you know, to my left, there's Romero's. He wasn't fighting Danny, but there's Romero's people on the side, yeah. and you know, and it would happen when Romero fought Johnny's people. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's a rivalry, man. Yeah. Nobody got hurt or anything. They had to put the fight in Vegas, so nobody nobody did. And I thought, you know, it was too bad it wasn't in Albuquerque. We got about four minutes left, but I but I I, I want to go back to why, and it's important that people know this, Jose. Yeah. I mean, you won your last six, and you, you're a competitor. You're probably thinking, hey, man, I you want to fight for a championship. Absolutely. Who does it, right? Yeah. But can you explain exactly what happened? Because I think it's important to understand, and everybody in Austin knows more than anybody, this is a brutal game, man. It's a brutal game. So why don't you tell us exactly what happened? Yeah, it absolutely is. So I had a fight against a really, really good, strong Irish fighter. Um, he was an Olympian, uh, Michael Collin. So we we're gonna fight him. I had signed the contract. Everything was good. So we were going to some pre-fight medical examinations, and I went to Vegas, Nevada, where they have to do an MRI. Um, so they did my MRI. They said that they couldn't sanction the fight, so they sent me back as there's no fight. So for myself, I wanted to see why they would see why they said that. Because 
to me. I thought maybe it was something else. I don't know. Came back, went to Phoenix to get that test done again. I got it done, and then I got a second opinion there where the doctor said that I had a lot of bruising in, in, a, in a certain part of my brain that she didn't think that it was a, the safest thing to do. Um, she, saw, she said that in the... And the safe side, don't require you to get that MRI. You can fight because everything else in me is, I'm in shape. I'm physically perfect to fight. Um, but she didn't recommend it because we can get, uh, you know, like uh, dementia as early at the age of 35, which is something I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want for myself, for my family. I wanted to uh, be able to remember my boxing career, what I was able to accomplish. Um, at, at one point, right now, I think I, I'm ranked still right now over 160 in the world. I was ranked like 99 in the world. And I want to be able to remember mm -hmm. that, be able to share that with right. my kids and my family. So that's why I decided to hang them up. Got about I, two, minutes, two minutes left. Um, now, I just got one more question. Would they have sanctioned that fight? You, you couldn't get a fight sanctioned with that report. I wanted to ask you that. Would you have been able to get a fight sanctioned? I could still get a, a fight sanctioned Okay, here. but you, you made that decision. I made that decision. What you're comfortable I, with. Yeah, I, it was very hard, very hard decision. But... I wanted, I am comfortable with that decision. Good. Yeah. That's so important for your future health. Yeah. Forget the glory, kid. Yeah. Forget that. Austin. Well, when I f first realized Jose was the real deal, Alex Hippolito, you fought him on the undercard of uh, Josh Torres' fight against the, no, I can't remember the Ganoi. Ganoi. Ganoi, yeah. And uh, you fought a furious six round draw with him. And he was a good fighter. And Boy, you you both gave it all, and I thought the draw was a good call. Yeah. I don't know if you did. You might have. You probably both thought you won, but he was a tough, tough guy, and 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 that's when I knew you were going to have a good career. Yeah. Because I was still worried about your chin. Yeah. He definitely tested it, <laughs> and you tested his, and uh, you guys could have easily fought two more rounds. There's some pictures right there of some great pictures, Austin, that you had of Jose yeah. Nachito Osorio. Got about a minute left as we go through these pictures. Producer Josh Brown doing a great job as always. John Herrera. John Herrera was a tough guy. That was an um, Argentinian fighter I fought. He was ranked 35 in the world. Uh, once I beat him, I ranked number 99 in the world. I love that picture. <laughs> you got that. Got about 30 seconds here. And uh, Jose, real quick, what are your plans now that you're not going to be? You're going to be still be, I'm sure, a fan of the game. Do you have any plans to train anybody else? What's your plans? Well, in the gym that I'm at, um, we fought at the at the Silver Gloves as well. We took two fighters. Both of them won their uh, Silver Glo Glove match, so they are both on their way to California now. So that's what I'm doing now, just trying to train the kids to, you know, try to get them to do what they, they want to do. You're comfortable with your decision. That makes it. Jose yeah. Nachito Osorio, thanks so much Thank for you being our guest, man. Thank you, you bet. For Austin Clean, Austin. Josh Brown, I'm Ed Nunez. We'll be back in two weeks for another episode of Legacy Boxing Showcase.